Oh, oh God, I should really get a Kindle. Oh. I have read a lot of books on data science, dozens of them, and I'm going to recommend which I think are the best ones. Now, what you want will depend on your use case, so we'll cover that. But there's quite a lot of overlap too. So whether you want to be a data scientist or you just want to understand LLMs a bit better so that you can interact with AI and know what's going on, you will find out by the end of this video. I'm going to recommend five books on data science and AI. Four of them are for a general audience, but they'll be useful for anyone who wants to study the subject further. But the four of them give context about what the subject is, the issues you need to be aware of. And sometimes when you study these subjects, you don't get that context. You just go straight into the technical stuff and you're not told about these other issues. But this way you'll get to know the context first and then you'll get the technical stuff. So after reading these books, you will be incredibly well informed about AI, how it works, what LLMs are, what data science is, how it affects our lives, and if you want to, how to do it. Is this one. Let me show you why I like this. Hello World by Hannah Fry. I'm going to take a look at Hannah Fry's book first. So what I like about this book is that it, it's not too technical but yet it gives a really good overview of how our data is used and what can go wrong when that data is misused. And already we're seeing that sort of thing happening in different applications of data. And she uses examples from the justice system where algorithms can make mistakes and have made mistakes over sentencing, medicine, and cars. And what this book does, well, it talks about how data is used for surveillance capitalism. It also talks about what happens when we become too dependent on data and we don't realize the applications that it's being put to. So it gives a really nice general overview of what algorithms are capable of, what they're not capable of, and what happens when they're used in situations where they shouldn't be, when they shouldn't be trusted so much. It doesn't go into a lot of technical detail, but it does provide a really good introduction to the subject of data and human interaction with data and what happens when you trust data too much and what that might mean for the future. So it's a great introductory book. But before we go any further, I want to tell you about DataCamp, who very kindly sponsored this video. Imagine if there were a way of going from knowing nothing about data science to having all of the skills necessary to be a data scientist all in one place. That's what you get with DataCamp. This is their Associate Data Scientist in Python track. It has over 23 courses. It'll teach you all of the Python skills you need to do data science. You learn data manipulation and machine learning, and you get hands-on experience using some of the well-known data science libraries like Pandas, Seaborn, and Scikit-Learn. Now this is a paid promotion, but I've been using DataCamp for years, and I think it's a great way to learn data science. Let me show you what I like about it. First of all, the way they teach is very hands-on. They explain something and then you have to write some code to solve a problem to move on. You write a lot of code and that's the best way to learn these types of skills. When I was doing postgraduate study in data science, I used DataCamp to learn the topics that weren't taught very well on the course. I found the way they were explained and demonstrated on DataCamp much easier to grasp than the explanations from my tutors. DataCamp helped me a lot with that because it had so many practical examples. As you work your way through the track, you complete projects where you have to apply what you've learned previously to solve a particular problem, like analyzing crime statistics in Los Angeles or movie data from Netflix. And once you've worked your way through all the lessons, you'll be prepared to attempt the DataCamp Data Scientist Certification. DataCamp certifications are industry recognized and come with timed exams and projects to complete within 30 days to showcase your expertise to potential employers. To see how far you could go with DataCamp, just click on the link in the description. Book two is The Art of Statistics, Learning from Data by David Spiegelhalter. Let me tell you why I like this one. How do machines learn from data? That's what The Art of Statistics, Learning from Data by David Spiegelhalter tells you. It's aimed at people that don't have a background in statistics and it shows you how the very basic statistics can be used very effectively in the case where Harold Shipman was caught by using data and the fact that actually he could have been caught much earlier had the data been looked at properly. 
It then gives an introduction into statistics. What is statistics? How is it applied? It then shows how statistics and probability can be combined. And then that leads to machine learning and examples of how statistics and probability can be used to provide predictions about the future. What it gives you is a really nice overview of how statistics works and how statistics can be applied to data in order to be able to learn. It doesn't get too mathematical, but it gives you enough maths in order to understand the processes involved. And you will finish reading it and be far more informed than, well, most people who don't have a statistical background. And so I think it complements the Hello World book. The Hello World book tells us how our data is used and misused and what data can be used for. This book goes more into the workings of data and how data can be used for prediction. Book three is Invisible Women by Caroline Criado Perez. Let's take a closer look. This book says it's exposing data bias in a world designed for men, but actually it's more data about bias, I would say. And the reason I've included it is not because you're going to learn how to use data, but you can see how data can reveal how we misuse things and how that can lead to prejudice and how we must be very careful if we're building automated systems that they don't entrench the prejudices that already exist. And the more we rely on automated systems that use data, the more we have to work extremely hard to ensure that prejudices that are already inbuilt in the data are not amplified by those automated systems. It can happen a lot. And this book shows why we mustn't let it happen. I've got it. I was a bit worried that I'd lost it, but uh, it was lurking in my bookshelf. It's this one. Artificial Intelligence, A Guide for Thinking Humans by Melanie Mitchell. And I'm going to show it to you now. There's a lot of hype surrounding AI and its capabilities. But if you want to get a really good understanding of what AI is and how it works and where we are currently, then this is the best introduction on AI that I have read by Melanie Mitchell. She speaks a lot of sense and she hasn't got caught up in the hype. In fact, she has a newsletter where she explains what her take is on all the latest developments. She talks about large language models and uh, what all the fuss is about there. But this book will give you a really good overview of what AI is, whether we're on the road to AGI, what the AI models that we have at the moment are, the ca are capable of, how we got where we are and what the history of AI is. You're a good overview of image recognition systems, neural networks and deep learning, what the challenges are for AI and the recent successes too, and how AI is applied to words. This is by far my favourite book on AI from someone that I think provides the best commentary on what's going on in this sector at the moment. It's an excellent book. I have two book recommendations if you want to learn how to do data science. The first one is learning scientific programming with Python. Now I know it says scientific programming, but actually this is a great introduction to doing data science because it teaches you all the Python you need to know in order to be able to write code that does all of the things that you're likely to want to do if you're working in data science. But not only that, it teaches you how to use Pandas, which is a fantastic library for handling data. Uh, it teaches you how to use Jupyter Notebook, and then it teaches you all about NumPy and how to use NumPy in mathematical settings and for linear algebra. Very useful for data science applications. Matplotlib, which of course is a great visualization library. Huh. Some say great, some don't like it so much, but it's incredibly useful and you will need it if you're doing data science. And there are other applications to data science from the things that you learn here too, and even has a section on data analysis with pandas. So I would definitely recommend this one, uh, even though it says scientific programming, it will be extremely useful. And the next Next one is the Data Science Manual by Stephen Skeener. This has less about how to program and how to use uh, code to do data science, but it tells you a lot of the concepts that you're going to need to understand in order to be able to understand data science and to think like a data scientist. It has really useful exercises at the end of each chapter, which get you thinking like a data scientist. And it gives you examples of the sorts of things you might encounter and the maths and statistics that you'll need to know if working as a data scientist. Now, if you take this book and the other book together, the learning scientific programming with Python, this will give you a great introduction, a good set of skills in order to really be able to excel at data science.